This is a $139 flight controller. And this is a $54 flight controller, which looks almost identical. The mistake is thinking that the $54 flight controller is just a cheap AliExpress clone of the more expensive one, but it's not. And the secret behind this flight controller completely surprised me. So in this video, I'm gonna reveal that secret and what makes this flight controller very different and why it could save FPV from becoming even more expensive. But more importantly, whether or not it's worth spending an extra 80 bucks to get this one. Our flight controllers are like computers. Every one of them has a processor, which is its brain. And that makes the magic of flying FPV possible. But our drones don't just need a flight controller. They also need an ESC, which makes the motor spin. Except the processor that we use in our flight controller and ESCs isn't just used for drones. You can find them being used in everyday life. And as the things that we use day to day become more computerized, so does the need and demand for these processors. Everyday devices, which we take for granted, like smart TVs, smart watches, home automation devices, digital cameras, robots, vacuum cleaners, smart speakers, home Wi-Fi systems, they pretty much all run on the same processor that our drones does. But it doesn't stop there. Our cars, which are even more computer augmented than ever before, also rely on these processors. And they rely on them for things, whether it's like the car stereo system to run CarPlay or Android Auto, or the driver assistance technology that keeps us in the lane, or the right distance from the car in front. These processors are even being heavily used in manufacturing, as we now rely on robotics more than humans. And of course, these processors are also used in aerospace and defense, like military drones and aircraft. But given how cheap they are, they are even now part of everyday military use in precision guided munitions. Basically anything that's fired by the military that is expected to hit the target now has pretty much the same processor that we use to hit a gap or a gate with our FPV drones. But the processors or semiconductors used in our flight controllers and ESCs is made by a company called ST Microelectronics. And they produce a line of processors that we know as the F411, the F405 and the F7. But as more things become computerized, the demand continues to increase. The manufacturing of these chips can only be done so quickly. And then when you combine the geopolitical arm wrestle between the US and China to protect Taiwan, where the bulk of these processes are made, it's easy to see why prices continue to skyrocket. But this is where the secret of this flight controller can change FPV forever. The processor and ESC on this $54 flight controller doesn't come from ST Microelectronics, but from a company called Artery. And it uses the AT32 F435 processor. The $134 flight controller uses an STM32 F7 processor. Now you might be thinking that an F7 is better than an F4, but it's not exactly. Think of it like this. The STM32 is your Intel processor and Artery is like Apple's M line of processors. So there's more to it than just F4 versus F7 with the bigger number being the better. You see Artery's F4 processor is 28% faster than STM's F7, but it's also 70% faster than STM's F4 processors as well. But the STM F7 does have double precision for floating point units, while the Artery F4 only has single floating point units. And what this actually means is that the F7 can do math with more decimal places than the Artery F4. And think of it like being able to multiply pi by 64 places as opposed to Artery's 32. And when it comes to doing something like flying FPV, it's easy to think that the lower processing speed but the ability to do math with more decimal places, wouldn't that make the STM F7 processor better? Well, not exactly, and here is why. The gyro and PID loop frequency in our flight controller is limited by beta flight. The most it can run is 8,000 times a second, and that requires the best gyro to even do that. And some of the newer gyros are only running at 3,000 times a second. And what this means in the real world of FPV is that both STM's F7 and Artery's F4 processors aren't even being used to their full capability. The Artery F4 can handle a pit loop and gyro frequency that can run up to 32,000 times a second, which is four times more than what the best gyro and pit loop on our drones runs at. 
and it's 10 times faster than even the slower gyros. So our drones don't actually need all the performance that these processors can comfortably do. So when you can save 60% just by choosing a flight controller with a different processor from a different company without actually compromising on any performance limitations, well, at least on paper, it does make it a tough sell to spend an extra 85 bucks on a flight controller. But the thing is, what is on paper means nothing in the real world. Let's actually go and put this on a build This is where we start to encounter the first few problems. Because the artery is brand new and we've had STM processors embedded into the FPV ecosystem for so long, we start to run into some practical issues. And those practical issues are like drivers and beta flight compatibility, which is similar to the issues that users faced when Apple switched from Intel to Apple Silicon. We're announcing that the Mac is transitioning to our own Apple Silicon. Now it is gonna take some time for Betaflight to have Artery fully implemented. So all those real world differences are worked out and normalized. And that's set for Betaflight 4.5. But thing is, Betaflight has actually been running STM processors since 2015. So let's actually go and take it out and fly and just see how it performs in the real world. Whew. So just got to the flying spot. It's time to set up and see how the artery chip goes in this quad. So we're gonna be flying with DJI 03, Express LRS. So let's see how it goes. All right, so let's have a bit of a chat quickly about the board. So the flight controller is using the Artery chip, but also the ESCs are using the AM32 ESCs, which are also made by Artery. Now, I haven't gone in and configured the ESC at all. I just literally plugged it straight in. And I can tell that there is some configuration that needs to be done to the ESC because when I'm at zero throttle, it feels like I'm having a desync and the quad drifts. So I've got back in from the flying field and as you could see from the DVR, there were some issues. And it turns out after actually reading the instructions, which something that we all don't do, we just typically think we know what we're doing. And I should have read the instructions considering this is brand new. But anyway, I digress. On the product page, it gives us some certain things to set up on the ESC configurator to make sure that we don't have issues. So I've gone through and I've actually done those and I'll step you through what they are. Now, you would have noticed that in the DVR at no throttle, basically the quad was just drifting in the air, almost like it was stalling. Turns out that's a feature called brake on stop, where when you have zero throttle, it basically applies a brake and the motors are not spinning at all. So normally with a multi-rotor, when you have zero throttle, it's not exactly zero throttle. The motors are still spinning based upon a setting in RPM called your motor idle percentage. And for this quad, it's five and a half percent. Now there are some other things. So what I've done is I've changed the ESC protocol from auto to D shot. And that's because we're using D shot in beta flight. I set advanced timing to 23 degrees, a left startup power. Now there is an option to have variable PWM frequency. Except I'm running DJI 03, so 24 hertz PWM frequency actually interferes with the gyro in the camera. So I've turned variable PWM frequency off and set it to 48. 
And then we go down to our motor specs. So we specify our motor KV, which is quite different, but it's interesting. And then I've set the motor poles. But one of the key benefits that Artery brings is the lower cost. And that lower cost can really help you save money, especially when you've got a lot of FPV gear. But one of the things that actually makes FPV more expensive is making a whole bunch of different money mistakes. And there are a lot of financial traps inside of FPV. So watch this video here to find out how to avoid all the different financial traps and the typical money mistakes people make in FPV. I'm Darren Allett, until next time, don't forget to send it.